A lot of us have been using our slow cookers to make delicious soups and stews and other hearty comfort food meals for our family throughout the winter. But even though we're coming into the warmer summer months, don't put those slow cookers away yet. I'm gonna show you how I use mine to create delicious, filling, satisfying meals that really hit the spot in summertime. Tonight we are having slow cooker pulled chicken with Alabama white barbecue sauce. It is coming from Spicy Southern Kitchen. I will leave the original recipe linked in the description box below. So I'm gonna get the chicken breast going in the slow cooker. It does call for bone in chicken breast, but I just have boneless skinless chicken breast. They came from Good Shop, who's sponsoring today's video, so we'll come back to that in a minute. And also just some you know really basic seasonings, butter, oil, paprika, garlic powder, salt, pepper, liquid smoke. So I'm gonna get that going in the slow cooker and it should be ready to shred up in a little bit. What really drew me to this recipe though was the white barbecue sauce that you make to go along with this. And we're gonna turn this into sandwiches so we can use that white barbecue sauce and drizzle it over the top. It's a mayo-based sauce, kind of like a ranch, except instead of like the dill and the garlic flavor you would have in ranch, it calls for vinegar, sugar, black pepper, and cayenne. I may have confessed this before, or maybe you have just surmised by the fact that I rarely use it or mention it in my cooking, but I can't stand mayo. I mean, if it's in a dressing or a sauce or you know something like that where I don't really know it's there, then fine. I guess you could say that I can stand it because obviously if I couldn't, I wouldn't partake of those things. I guess it's just like plain on its own. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. Like if you bring me a sandwich with mayo on it, I will politely decline. However, I'm going to have to get over that because this white barbecue sauce does call for mayo I was tempted to reduce the amount because it calls for three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. <laughs> Along with half a cup of sour cream and half a cup of milk. Two tablespoons of vinegar, just plain white vinegar. Two teaspoons of sugar, a teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne. So I'm actually going to put all of that into my little ninja single cup blender server thingy madoodle and I'm just gonna blend it all up and put it in the refrigerator until we're ready to make up the sandwiches later on. If this tastes half as good as it smells right now, especially after I add the sauce on top, <laughs> I cannot wait to dry it. I'm just gonna put this on some buns with the sauce and probably some fruit and maybe, maybe a veggie, maybe some pretzels, something like that, and gonna be an easy, easy dinner, delicious dinner tonight. A little messy, but really good. Many of our favorite summer crock pot recipes are similar to this. It's sort of taking something that you might make all year long, even in the cold months, in the winter months, and you know, just serving it differently so that it makes more sense in the summer. So if you have a fantastic pot roast recipe for the crock pot, instead of serving it over noodles or with mashed potatoes, maybe you would turn it into sandwiches, you know, put it on ciabatta rolls. Or maybe you would put it in a tortilla with some crunchy cold coleslaw, or just with some lettuce and some fresh pico and turn it into tacos. I know a lot of people really like the crack chicken. It's the shredded chicken that you make in the slow cooker with ranch seasoning and with cream cheese and bacon and cheddar. And instead of serving that warm over rice like I would in the winter time or throwing some pasta in it to make a casserole with, I might let it cool down and serve it on little Hawaiian rolls as sliders. The point is you probably already have some really great recipes, especially for proteins, that you can just serve a different way. Maybe turn it into a salad or turn it into tacos or maybe even toss it with some cooked pasta and some veggies and put it in the refrigerator to make a delicious pasta salad that you can eat chilled. It's just kind of rethinking some of the recipes that we already have and turning them into something that is more refreshing for the summertime. I am just leaving the aquatic center. We have been at a swim meet for most of the day, so I'm very glad that I threw some potatoes into the slow cooker earlier today so that we could have baked potatoes tonight along with steaks and salmon fillets that my husband, God bless him, I love that man, is going to throw on the grill for me. They're from Good Shop, who's sponsoring today's video. In the warmer months in my kitchen, the oven and the stove are generally on hiatus for much of the summertime. And if we're not using the slow cooker to cook our meals, we're using our grill, which is why I am delighted to be working with Good Shop to bring you today's video. Sponsorships make it possible for me to justify spending upwards of 20 hours producing just one video. But even given that, I'm very particular about the sponsorships that I accept. 
So I can tell you without a doubt, my husband and I and our children agree, these are the best steaks that we have ever made in our home. These are better than almost anything we've ever eaten at a restaurant, even like a high price tag steakhouse. And we are purists when it comes to our steaks. All right, honey, tell me what does a really good steak need? It needs one thing, it needs salt. Just salt? Just salt. My husband does not use marinades or very much seasoning, it's just salt. And then he throws it on the grill and maybe a little pat of butter at the end. And I'm telling you, these were so tender, juicy, flavorful. We will definitely be ordering the steaks again. Mmm, it's delicious, Dad. What do you think, Kenna? <laughs> Hugs for the chef. But Good Shop does offer lots of other cuts of meat that they source from right here in the USA, like chicken breast and salmon and bacon and pork tenderloin. There's lots to choose from on their website. You can get started with Good Shop today and have this high quality meat delivered right to your doorstep. And you can get $120 off across your first four boxes when you go to the link in the description box below or you visit goodshop.com slash YouTube and you use my code Mindy120. Again, that'll give you $120 off across your first four boxes, goodchop.com slash YouTube, and then my code Mindy120, or visit the link in the description box below. Good Shop is so sure that you are gonna love their meat that they have a 100% money back guarantee. That means you can have it delivered right to your door, and if you do not love it, they will give you your money back, so you can try it risk-free. So again, there's a link in the description box, or you can go to goodshop.com slash YouTube. Use my code Mindy120. It's gonna give you $120 off across your first four boxes, don't forget 100% money back guarantee. You have nothing to lose if you want to try them out. And thank you again to Good Shop for sponsoring today's video. I am a little embarrassed to admit how long I have had this brand new slow cooker sitting in a box in my office. The reason that I purchased this is because I get a lot of questions about my Instant Pot Aura slow cooker. And that particular item has been discontinued by Instant Pot. They don't make it anymore. So I was looking for something that was similar, that had some of the same amenities and bells and whistles that I could share with you guys. So I found this one and I purchased it and I've been waiting for just the right time to share it with you. And obviously this video is a good opportunity. But wouldn't you know that today when I'm ready to start filming and I went to my computer to check on the status of this particular brand and model of slow cooker that I'm going to be using in this video on Amazon. It is not available, at least not in the six quart size, which is the one that I'm using. However, the seven quart size of this slow cooker is available on Amazon. So I'll leave a link in the description box if you want to check it out. It looks like it's very similar. So totally up to you. You can use other brands of slow cookers too for this video. I just thought it would be fun to try out a new one. Tonight I'm going to use my slow cooker to make filling for some delicious beef, bean, and cheese crunchy burritos. And instead of using ground beef, I'm actually gonna use this top round steak that I got from Aldi. Now, top round steak is not as good an option for the grill like a ribeye or a New York strip would be because it's a little leaner, it's gonna cook up a little tougher if you try to cook it like a traditional steak, at least in my opinion. But the leaner and, in this case, less expensive cuts of meat can work fantastic in the slow cookers because the slow cooking process is going to make it really tender and a lot of times it's really easy to shred it up and depending on how you season it, it can make fantastic meals, including fillings for burritos, for sandwiches, for quesadillas, salad toppings, just some really great shredded meat options. I have a little over a pound of round steak in here and it was $7 and some change. It was only $5.99 a pound. So a little bit more than a pound in here. And I'm going to add to that about a cup of refried beans, which would be about half of a can. But I have this 10 ounce package, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these. You could use black beans or a different kind of beans if you want. My family just likes refried beans and this is gonna make just a creamier filling. But by all means, if you wanna sub a different kind of beans, feel free, you would just need about a cup. I'm also gonna use about a cup of salt Salsa as well, just prepared salsa. A package of taco seasoning, or for me, that is about two to three tablespoons of my homemade taco seasoning. I am also going to add one cup of water because later on I'm gonna add some rice to this, so I want there to be some liquid to add the rice at the end. You'll see 
how I'm doing that later on. But if you don't wanna add rice to your burrito filling, you would just leave out the water. So I'm gonna pop the lid on this. I'm getting it going early in the day. So I'm gonna let it cook on low for about six hours and then we'll come back and check on it. And I'll show you how I'm gonna finish it up and how we're putting the burritos together. The beef is nice and tender. I am just shredding it up with a fork and I'm gonna stir everything together, including adding one cup of just plain white rice. I'm gonna pop the lid back on and I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up to the high slow cook setting. And it should take just about 20 to 30 minutes for the rice to soak up the liquid that is here in the slow cooker. And then I'm going to assemble the burritos by taking some of the filling and putting it on a big tortilla with some shredded cheese and some crunchy corn chips and maybe some sour cream and rolling it all up. And I'm probably just gonna serve this with like a salad or some veggies or something like that to go along with it. It doesn't really need any chips or any other starches because it's all right there in the burrito. So it should be really delicious and yummy. I have heard a lot of people mention or I've read a lot of places that people like to use slow cookers as a way to save energy, a way to save a little money on their electric bill, use less energy in their household. And honestly, when I've gone down the rabbit hole on that, so much depends on the size of the slow cookers that you're using, the make and model, how efficient they are, and then also the size and efficiency of your oven and how much time you would be running that as opposed to using your slow cookers. Honestly, the primary reason, the number one reason that I use my slow cooker so much is the convenience factor. I find it easier in this season of life when we tend to be pretty busy in the evenings to get something going in the slow cookers earlier in the day so then it's ready at dinner time when we're ready to eat it as opposed to running around my kitchen trying to utilize the stove and the oven in the evening to throw together a family meal. But in the summer, in the warmer temperatures, I have another incentive for utilizing my slow cooker so much in preparing our family's meals, and that is the heat factor. This and all its little friends that I keep around in various sizes and shapes is a tiny little bucket of heat. This is a big old box of heat. And even with a newer, more efficient model and with fans to help with cooling everything down once the cooking process is over, all that heat has to go somewhere. When I open the doors to take things out or when I'm done using them and they have to cool down again. So all that heat is gonna come out into my kitchen or into my house, which is either going to make things warmer and more uncomfortable or it's gonna make my air conditioners work harder if I'm running those. As opposed to just a little bit of heat that is running very slowly and at a much lower temperature over in the corner of my counter somewhere, you know? Now in the summertime, we do eat a little bit lighter fare or the kinds of things that can be served chilled, you know, like sandwiches and salads and wraps or pasta salads. But sometimes we do still crave a hearty meal, even a warm meal. And I have figured out how to make the kinds of things that I would normally make on the stove, like one pot meals or casseroles that have pasta and rice. I've learned how to do that in the slow cooker. So we're actually gonna do one of those tonight. I'm gonna make a hamburger helper, just kind of the trident true cheeseburger mac, but I'm going to do it solely in my slow cooker. One of the biggest reasons I like to keep one of these kinds of slow cookers on hand is for this function right here, the saute function, because I can brown ground beef or ground sausage, or I can brown like little chicken pieces right here in the unit without having to do it on the stove and then move it to a slow cooker insert. So right now I am browning one pound of ground beef here in this slow cooker on the saute function. And this one even has the ability to let you adjust the saute temperature. So if you wanna saute something on a little bit lower temperature or you wanna sear something at a higher temperature, you can do this with this slow cooker. To season this, I'm going to use one teaspoon of paprika, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and one teaspoon of salt. I like to keep it easy. Just keep it all the same in this one. Normally I would use an eight ounce can, a little can of tomato sauce, but I don't have any in the pantry. So instead I'm gonna use about three tablespoons of tomato paste and I'm just gonna add an extra half cup of water or so to make up the difference. I also like to add a pinch of red pepper flake, like maybe a quarter to a half teaspoon. You can leave that out if you don't like the kick, if your family doesn't like spicy stuff. Plus two cups of water. And like I said, an additional half cup or so for me since I'm using tomato paste instead of tomato sauce. I am going to pop the lid on this and switch it over to the high slow cook setting. And we're gonna come back and finish it up later. Now when it comes to crock potterizing,
recipes like casseroles or one pot pasta dishes for the slow cooker. I've learned a few things. First off, I don't add pasta or rice if it's one of those types of casseroles or any dairy like milk or half and half or cream until the end of the cook cycle. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. And secondly, I have learned kind of what the liquid situation needs to be in the slow cooker in order for pasta or rice to cook appropriately at the end of the cook cycle without making it super liquidy or completely drying out. For me, that is about two to one. And so if I'm using rice, I need about two cups of liquid for every cup of rice. If I'm using pasta, it's a little bit tricky because one cup of dry pasta, if you were to just use a measuring cup, is really about four ounces on the scale. So for every four ounces of pasta I'm using, I need eight ounces or a little bit more of liquid. And honestly, shh, a little secret, if I've ever had something come out a little bit soupy, like if I've overestimated the liquids and the pasta or the rice is already cooked and it's still kind of soupy, I will just make a little cornstarch slurry with one or two tablespoons of cornstarch and one or two tablespoons of water and stir that in and it'll help thicken everything up. So far, I am much more impressed with the slow cook function on this um, Cuisinart slow cooker, multifunction slow cooker than I was with my Instant Pot Aura. You can see that I have it on high and it's actually simmering and it, I, I never could get my Instant Pot Aura to really come up to temperature I felt like. So um, this has been better in my book. This has been going for about two hours now and it smells amazing. So I'm going to stir in two cups of milk and I did heat the milk up in the microwave for like 30 seconds or so just so that it wouldn't be ice cold when I added it to my slow cooker. And two cups of elbow macaroni. I'm just gonna stir this up until the macaroni is submerged in the liquid. I'm gonna pop the lid back on and I'm gonna keep this on high and the Pasta should be cooked in about 20 to 30 minutes, and all I will have to do is stir in about one to two cups of cheese. Cheddar would be great, but I'm probably just gonna use a hodgepodge of what I have lying around in the refrigerator, and it'll be ready to go. In case you're wondering if I ever experience recipe fails on this channel, yes, I do all the time, just like anybody else in just about any kitchen across America. I did have another recipe that I wanted to share with you guys for a crock pot dessert, and it was coming from a very good friend, or at least I like to think we'd be good friends, Betty Crocker. It was coming from the Betty Crocker website, and I was really intrigued by it, but unfortunately, everybody in the household was like, nah, mom, not worth sharing. So instead of sharing that one with you, I tracked down a couple of other videos that I've made on my channel with good crock pot and summer meal ideas. I've left them right here for you to watch next for more ideas.